I see. So you believe that this warning letter was sent by the Phantom Weasel? Absolutely! I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Phantom Weasel never acts as you expect. He must have faked his own death ten years ago using a body double. Now that he's back, I'm sure the guards who worked on his case back in the day are in for a headache, but however this turns out in the end, the one thing it won't be is boring. Couldn't agree more. As a journalist, I'm gonna get a lot of mileage out of this one. Thank you, sir, for your time. Now, whom should I interview next? Oh, huh? Hey! What a coincidence! Fancy meeting you here! Perfect timing. So, the Phantom Weasel's latest warning letter. What are your thoughts? Yeah, this is the first time we're hearing of this one. Could you clue us in? Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, this case is from a decade ago. I guess you wouldn't know about it. Well, not to worry. You're in good hands because I'm a professional. The story goes like this. Ten or so years ago, a phantom thief became active in the court of Fontaine. Known only as the Weasel, nobody knew his true identity, and the authorities never managed to catch him. Wow, cool! He sounds like one of those mysterious night burglars that you read about in novels. Precisely. Well, except the part where they actually have a good reputation. Our weasel targeted whatever people held dear, and no one was safe from his predations. He would just as soon steal a necklace from a rich merchant's safe as he would a toy doll given to a commoner child for their birthday. I know, the phantom thieves you read about in novels rob the rich to pay the poor, but this guy did not discriminate. Unsurprisingly, this didn't work wonders for his public reputation. Every man and his dog wanted to see him behind bars. Yeesh. So, uh, did they catch him? Um, not exactly. There's a good chance that the weasel would still be at large to this day if it hadn't been for an accident ten years ago. A magician named Caesar fell to his death in a botched high-altitude escape performance. When the police went through his personal effects, they found a hoard of stolen loot and gadgets used for criminal activities. And that was how the Phantom Weasel's identity was revealed to all. Sure enough, thefts in Fontaine went down after Caesar's death. But today, ten years on, the notorious thief has once again issued one of his warning letters and pasted it on the gate of the Opera Epicles for all to see. I had to squeeze through the crowd this morning to get a photo as soon as I heard. Here, it's this one. So, this is the warning letter, huh? Let's see what he wrote. Three days from now, when evening falls, I shall take from you that which you hold most dear at the Opera House. Just as you did to me ten years ago. This is, without a doubt, a clear declaration of criminal intent. After years of laying low, the Phantom Weasel is back with a vengeance! What once seemed like an open and shut case has been blown wide open again! But why has he re-emerged now? And what does he want? I sense an epic scoop! And I'm going for it! Uh-oh. If this thief will steal anything that other people value, does that mean even we might be targeted? Really? Oh. Let him try! In fact, Hyman's gonna eat all our snacks right now! Let's see what he can do about that! Okay, the people have spoken. It's clear that the public are very concerned about the Phantom Weasel's reappearance. Let's see, I've got a photo of the letter, my interview notes. Yep, that should be enough to form the skeleton of my article. It does feel like something is missing, though. Something. Exclusive. Who should I interview next? I need someone with a more concrete connection to the weasel. Hmm. <gasps> is that who I think it is? Lenny! Magic. Magician. Caesar! <gasps> the Phantom Weasel! That's it! Let's go interview Lenny! You see, the original Phantom Thief Caesar was a magician too! 
And what do phantom thieves and magicians have in common? They both have an air of mystery about them. Perhaps there's a connection there. Are you serious? What sort of a deduction is that? Oh, relax. My journalistic instinct tells me that an exclusive news story is beckoning. Let's go. No time for delay. Wow, Mr. Magician! How did you know which card I picked? Oh, it's simple. Come closer and I'll let you in on my secret. Magicians have a special skill called telepathy, which means we can read other people's minds. Really? Then, what am I thinking now? Well, first you need to relax. Because I can see that you're clenching your fist in your mind, as if to say, no, I mustn't let him guess it. Aww. And now you're getting a little flustered. You're trying to find a way to empty your mind, to think of nothing at all. But the more you try to hide a secret, the easier it'll come out. You snuck out from home today, didn't you? You told your family a little lie so you could come out and play. Now, now, that's not a good habit. Y you can tell? Uh, oh boy, you really can read my mind. Of course. Uh, and that's the end of my performance. You should really be heading home. Remember to apologize to your family, all right? They must be worried about you. Uh, all right, got it. Bye, Mr. Magician. Why, hello. We meet again. Are you looking for me? What's the situation? Well, why don't you guess, Mr. Telepathic? Oh, please. You didn't believe that spiel, did you? The power of telepathy is quite beyond me. I'm sure that child would beg to differ. Seemed like you were right on the money. That was nothing more than a little trickery. I made an educated guess based on his micro-expressions. That, plus the fact that he was the only kid here without his parents, and he looked as guilty as sin. He made it easy for me. You guys, on the other hand... Hmm... Let me guess. Don't tell me you're here for the Phantom Weasel, are you? Wow! Got it in one! Is this more of your trickery at work? Wait, really? <laughs> no, no trickery this time. It was pure luck. His warning letter's been the talk of the town, so I figured that maybe you were asking around about that. Bingo! I plan on writing a column reporting on the latest news about the Phantom Weasel. So, Linny, what are your thoughts on this infamous thief's reappearance? Hmm... To be honest... It makes me angry. Angry? Why? You read his letter, right? The Phantom Weasel claims he's planning something in three nights' time at the Opera House. That's the night I'll be performing there. Huh. What are the chances? <gasps> Wait a minute! You don't think he's after you, do you? Well, if he is, then his warning is clearly a direct challenge to me personally. And if he's not, then it's still going to be a huge headache for me. The mere mention of the weasel's name is enough to scare people off. So once the contents of that letter get out, barely anyone will be showing up to watch my show. But I've been preparing for this for a long time. I'm not about to let him ruin my big day. This leaves me with only one choice. I have to expose the Phantom Weasel's identity before the show begins. Really? So what you're saying is, we might get to see a live duel between a famous magician and an infamous thief? Wow, this has exclusive written all over it! 
To be honest, I'm not sure if I'll emerge the victor. The Phantom Weasel is a notorious crook, infamous for his inscrutable methods. You're being far too modest, Linny. I think your magic tricks are even more inscrutable than those of a thief. Thanks for the compliment, though I have to say, I don't care much for the comparison. A lot of people liken magicians to thieves because we both have the ability to make things disappear without the person noticing. But there's an important difference that these people overlook. Allow me to demonstrate with a quick magic trick. Here, I have a flower, just an ordinary flower that was picked not long ago. Watch it carefully now. Three, two, one. Oh, <gasps> it's gone! That's the question. Where did it go? Therein lies the difference between us. Thieves make precious things disappear, but only magicians make them reappear. If I could now invite you all to check your clothes, there might be a surprise in there somewhere. A surprise? Let me see! Outstanding trick! Sorry, Linny, it seems that my previous praise was woefully inadequate. Clearly, magic is the superior art form to theft. Don't worry, I didn't take offense. I just wanted to take the opportunity to perhaps change some of the preconceived notions you might have about magicians. Since Caesar's death, a lot of people associate magicians with criminality. It can be quite frustrating. I can imagine. Um, coming back to your trick just now, might I presume that you are well versed in floral symbolism? For example, magicians often use rainbow roses in their flower-related performances to represent passion and romantic encounters. But you used a Lumidu spell, which, if I'm not mistaken, allude to separations. I'm curious to know if there was any deeper meaning behind this choice? Impressive knowledge. It's no wonder you're such a successful journalist. But I'm afraid I don't know the first thing about floral symbolism. I'm just in the habit of using Lumidu spells in my magic. It sounds like something I should look into, though. Hmm. I'll buy myself a copy of Fontaine's Floral Language Facts when I have some time. But it'll have to wait until this phantom weasel business is behind us. Well noted. In that case, this brings us to the end of our interview. I, for one, am looking forward to the final showdown between you and the thief. Please feel free to get in touch to update me on any further developments. Otherwise, I will of course see you at your show in three days' time. But let's hope the Phantom Weasel is caught by then. If there's nothing else, uh, I'll be off. You've given me lots to work with here, and I've got no time to lose if I want to write that exclusive piece. I'll see you all later! Linny, are you going to tell us how you did that flower trick now? <laughs> I'm afraid that's my little secret. Aww. Well, magicians are entitled to their secrets. But Paimon's really itching to know how it's done. You feel it too, right? So itchy. <laughs> Not so itchy then, huh? Well, since you're so concerned, how would you like to serve as my temporary magician's assistant and help me investigate? Magician's assistant? Oh, that sounds fun! Assistants are technically magicians too! Also, it'll bring us one step closer to figuring out how that darn trick is done! Shall we go for it? The first thing we need to look into is who Caesar really was. If he truly was the Phantom Weasel, that means that the Weasel is dead, and whoever wrote this warning letter is just a copycat criminal. But if he wasn't the Weasel? Hmm... Well, that'll make things more interesting. It would mean that the Weasel lives, and he's been laying low all this time in some corner of Fontaine. And if we're investigating Caesar, his fiancée Gemma is a good place to start. Word is that she visits the cemetery often, so I asked Lynette to wait for her there. We should make a move. Let's go and rendezvous with Lynette. <laughs>